two two seventy going into your senior year in high school, he'll add about fifteen pounds a year because he's about that size. He's 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 got the frame to be a big boy that's disruptive. And watching his film, I'm just like, oh yeah, he's disruptive. He's like a dude. he calls problems. He's mm-hmm. a dude. He gets off good. He is a dude. And so when I look at him and I see him here with uh with Bates, I'm like, okay. They're, they're going after the real ones. Talk to me about them. Because, like I said, you've been high on them, high on this four-star. You've been, you know, talking through the uh, – trying to potentially put out some predictions on this cat. What you feeling about them? Yeah, so actually, I, um, I'll give you all a little nugget. I am putting in a prediction for him. I just haven't had a chance to make the graphic. Um, I'll be making a video and putting that out later this week discussing why. But, no, uh, I, I understand a lot of people are having a hard time getting over how his dad was a former – Texas defensive lineman from 1991 to 1995. I get it. A lot of people are having a hard time getting over that. Here's the deal, though. The relationship with Texas, it's just not there, guys. Like It it was kind of there with Bo Davis. For those of y'all that are in the Discord, you guys know my take on that, so join Jay's Discord so that you can kind of get the scoop there. But um, listen... I think Oklahoma, in terms of the relationship that Todd Bates has with Landon Rink, with how many times he has been to Oklahoma. Remember, Oklahoma is not close to him. He's down there in that Houston area. That is an eight-hour drive. That is an eight-hour drive. I've made it many times to go on a cruise. It's not an easy drive. It is a boring drive. He's been to Oklahoma multiple times, numerous times. I'm trying to pull up the exact number. Uh, I think it's, let's see here, uh... Now, five times, he's been to Texas nine. Texas is right down the road. A&M, right down the road. He's been there three times, right? You expect all those Texas schools to get visits. He's been to Oklahoma five times. And every time I talk to him, and I talk to him about the Todd Bates relationship, he tells me every time, it's the best relationship I have. Todd Bates, I love that dude. And Landon Rink got to spend a lot of time with other guys that were really high on Oklahoma that are Currently in this class that you expect to be there, hence yep. a Kobe Sellers. So, you know, I, I asked him um, about the visit. He says, you know, what really stood out was the family environment, which, again, that's not a shock. We've talked about that a couple times. He says, I have a great relationship with Kobe Bates. I want it to be done. I want to be done with my recruitment around official visit time. But in talking about takes Texas A&M and Texas visits, these were the exact words I got. They're both great programs. I think they're going to be very competitive next year. That's all you can ever get out of him. That's about all you can ever get when it comes to Texas and Texas A&M. So I understand a lot of people were burned by the Colton Vasek. But guys, Landon Rink, I think he's a different guy. I think he's a different dude. I think y'all should be excited. If we land him, this is a guy that's, I think, going to be a top 200 player when it's all said and done. And I'll say this, though. Like, like no, no, no beef. You know, no no shade to anything. You, you know, as you say what you say, though, I'm still on the side of caution in this entire situation because until the ink is dry and the pen is, uh, he signs on the line, which is dotted, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm actually sold on the idea of him being a Sooner. It ain't nothing on him. I just got to see it, especially being a legacy from Texas, which is a fascinating one. Somebody mentioned that. You know, it was uh, probably my popped in here on that one. Nick, yeah, he is a Texas legacy. And so that's one of those players you ask the question of, okay, what does it look like? But the good thing in our favor is, you know, Texas has some changes on the line, right? Bo Davis is gone. He's at LSU, hence why our boy, unfortunately, Don McKinley is probably signing there in February uh, in two weeks because Bo Davis bounced out and he's there. So now we got that. It's kind of like, dang. Yeah. You either love him right. or you hate him. You either love him or you hate him when it comes to Bo Davis. But I'll say this, and the reason why I don't think Texas is going to heavily pursue Landon Rink, they've got a lot of other options that they really like, like Zion Williams out of Lufkin, Texas. Actually, they're actually pursuing Xavier Ukponu pretty hard, who is a guy Ooh. out of Ditton Geyer, played with 
Jackson Arnold, Eli Bowen, Peyton Bowen. It's a guy I would love to see Oklahoma go after. They're in the recruitment for Ethan Utley, uh, DJ Sanders out of Belleville, Texas. Like They actually have some higher targets that are higher up on the totem pole in terms of rankings and class that they're going to go after that I think Oklahoma is going to silently come in and sneak in and grab Landon Rink, who might be more of a hidden gem, and Texas might try to go after the guys like in, in, in their own state that are a little bit more highly ranked. I mean, they've already got Lance Jackson committed on the defensive line, so... I'm not too worried about it. I'm not too worried about the legacy thing coming into effect. I'm, I think a lot of people are looking too much into that. Well, there's another one on this list right here that we're looking at. We've got